उपाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय चैप्टर सिक्सटीन द डिवाइन एंड डिमोनियट नेचर्स श्री भगवान उवाच अभय तत्व ज्ञान योग व्यवस्थित दानम दमस हरिचपल तेज श्रुति शौचम अद्रो होनति मानिता संपदाम दैविम अभिजातस्य भारता द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड सेड फियरलेसनेस प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ वंस एक्सिस्टेंस कल्टीवेशन ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज चैरिटी सेल्फ कंट्रोल परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस स्टडी ऑफ द वेदर्स austerity simplicity non violence truthfulness freedom from anger renunciation tranquility aversion to fault finding compassion for all living entities freedom from covetousness gentleness modesty steady determination vigor forgiveness fortitude cleanliness and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor this transcendental qualities o sana bharata belong to godly men endowed with divine nature text 4 dambo darpo abhimanascha krodah paryushme vacha agyanam chabhijatasya par chabhijatasya partha sampadam asurim pride arrogance concert anger harshness and ignorance these qualities belong to those of demoniac nature usana pritha next five then the sampada vimokshaya nibhan dayo suri mata ma suchah sampadam devim abhijato si pandava the transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation whereas the demoniac qualities make for bondage do not worry osana pandu for you are born with the divine qualities text 6 dwa bhuta sarga loke spin deva asura eva cha devo vistarashah prokta prokta asuram partha me shu Osana Pritha. In this world, there are two kinds of created beings. One is called the divine, and the other, demoniac. I have already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now, hear from me of the de- demoniac. Seven. Pravartim cha nivrtim cha jana na vidura sura na shocham na pi cha charo. those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done neither cleanliness nor proper behavior not truth is found in them text a asatyam aprasth apratishtam te jagat ahur anishwaram apaspara Make host. Okay, change host. 
Okay, Mother, listen if you are host now. Uh, yes, I am, and I'm going to try and share the screen so that everybody can see the verses. I'm so sorry for this. I had to shut down my computer. Uh, can everybody see the screen now? Yes, yes we can. Okay. Uh, what verse were you at, please? Eight. Text eight. Okay, sorry for all this. Shipra Mataji, you can continue now. Okay. They say that this world is unreal with no foundation, no God in control. They say it is produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lust. Following such conclusions, the demoniac who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence engage in benef unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. Text 10. Kamam Asita Dushpuram Dambha Mana Madan Vitaha Mohad Grahitva Sad Grahan Pravaran Pravartante Suchi Vrataha Taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in the concert of pride and false prestige, the demoniac thus illusioned are always shown to unclean work attracted by the impermanent. Text 11 and 12. Chintam apiram chintam aparime yamcha prayantam upasitaha kama kama pabhog parma parma etavad itinishchitaha asha pasha satera asha pasha satera baddha kama krodha prayayanaha ihante kama bhogara bhogartham anyayanartha sanchayan they believe that to gratify the senses is the prime necessity of human civilization. Thus, until the end of life, their anxiety is immeasurable, bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires and absorbed in lust and anger. They secure money by illegal means for sense gratification. Text 13 and 15. Idha madhya maya labdham Prapasse manoratham idam astitam apime bhavishyati punar dhanam aso maya hataha chatrur hanishyase chaparan api ishvaroham bhogi siddho hambalvan sukhi adhyo bhijanam bhijan vanasmi Konyo Asti Sadrasho Maya Yak Yakshe Dayas Yakshe Dayas Yami Modish Itya Agyana Vimohitaha. The dominiac person thinks so much wealth do I have today and I will gain more according to my scheme. So much is mine now and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful and happy. I am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity and thus I shall Rejoice! I this in this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. At sixteen, anek aneka chitta vibhranta moha jala samavrata prasakta kam bhogeshu patanti narkeshu cho. Thus perplex the various anxieties and bound by a network of illusions, they become to strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell. 
आत्मसंभाविता स्तब्धा धन मान मद आन्विता यजन्ते नाम यज्ञस्ते दंभे ना विधि पूर्वकम सेल्फ कॉम्प्लेसेंट एंड ऑलवेज इम्पुडेंट डिल्यूडेड बाय वेल्थ एंड फॉल्स प्रेस्टीज दे समटाइम्स प्राउडली परफॉर्म सैक्रिफाइसेस इन नेम ओनली विदाउट फॉलोइंग एनी रूल्स और रेगुलेशंस टेक्स्ट 18 अहंकारम बलम दर्पम कामम क्रोधम च संश्रिता मामात्मा पर देहेशु प्रदविशंतो भय सुयकः भय सुयकः बीवेल्डेड बाय फॉल्स इगो स्ट्रेंथ प्राइड लास्ट एंड एंगर द डेमोन्स बिकम एनवियस ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉडहेड who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and blush him uh, against the real religion text 19 tanaham dishatah kruraran kruraran sansareshu nara taman shipyami ajashram ashubhan asu viswa evayo nishu those who are envious and mischievous who are the lowest among men the perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence into various demoniac species of life next 20 asurim yoni mapanna mura janmani janmani mam prape vikonteya tato yant dhamam gatim attaining repeated births amongst the pieces of demoniac life son of kunti such persons can never approach me gradually they sink down to the most abominable type of existence text 21 prividham narkasyedam dwaram nashan matmana kamam krodastha tatho lobhas tasmat there are three gates leading to this hell last anger and greed every sane man should give this up for they lead to the degradation of the soul text 22 eter vir bhukti konteya tamo dware satribir naraha achar आचार्य आत्मन श्रेयस तथो यति परम गतिम दि मैन हु हैज एस्केप दिस थ्री गेट्स ऑफ हेल ओ स्थान ऑफ कुंती परफॉर्म्स एक्ट्स कंडूसिव टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड दस ग्रेजुअली अटेंड्स द सुप्रीम डेस्टिनेशन टेक्स्ट 23 यय यय शास्त्र विधि मृत सृज्य वर्तते कामकारन कारतः नासा सिद्धिम वापनोति नासुखम न परम गतिम ही हु डिस्कर्ड्स स्क्रिप्चुअल इंजंक्शंस एंड एक्ट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू हिज ओन व्हिम्स अटेंड्स नाइदर परफेक्शन नॉर हैप्पीनेस नॉट द सुप्रीम डेस्टिनेशन तस्मात् शास्त्रम प्रमाणम ते तस्माशास्त्र प्रमाण ते कार्य कार्य व्यवस्थित ज्ञावा शास्त्र विधि नोक्त कर्म कर्तूर्मी हा हर हसी इहर हसी one should therefore understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures knowing such rules and regulations one should act so that he may gradually be elevated hari krishna om tat sat iti shrimad bhagavad gita shu upanishad su brahma vidyayam yog shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade dev asur sampad vibhag yogo nam shodasho adhyaya thank you very much um sandeep prabhu and uh, shubhramata ji thank you and i'm sorry for all this confusion for some reason uh, you know this is what technology does sometimes and um ajay mukund hari sorry um 
it just uh, you were the first name and you're always the first name i think that's why you just you know i had to just make you the host um, no worry thank you thank you very much uh, uh, for bearing with me hopefully we won't have any more problems now for the next bit okay so we are going to continue with uh, chapter 16 verse verses 1 2 3 and just one minute i need to just share the screen just give me a minute yeah here we go screen share screen and yeah okay can everybody see the screen now yes ma'am yes we can yes thank you so um we will do the same verse today shri bhagwan uvacha abhayam sattva samshudhir gyana yoga vyavashit vyavastiti दानम दमस्च यज्ञस्च स्वाध्यायस्तप आर्जवम अहिंसा सत्यमक्रोधस त्याग शांतेर अपैशुनम दया भूतेश अलोलुपवम मार्दवम हिरीर अचपलम तेज क्षमा धृति शौचम अद्रोहो नाति मानिता भवन्ति संपदम दैवेम अभिजातस्य भारत translation and purport by um shila propa shila propa the key jay is going to make this here okay the supreme personality of god had said fearlessness purification of one's existence cultivation of spiritual knowledge charity self control performance of sacrifice study of the vedas austerity simplicity non violence truthfulness freedom from anger renunciation tranquility aversion to fault finding compassion for all living entities freedom from covetousness gentleness modesty steady determination vigor forgiveness fortitude cleanliness and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor these transcendental qualities o son of arata belong to godly men endowed with divine nature okay so um purport we had read half yesterday i think we read till the 6th paragraph so we will move to the 7th one which is so we need to start from here the next item is charity does anybody want to read today i don't know okay somebody said something can i just yeah please whoever wants to read please please go ahead uh, is it from uh... It, the next item is charity if you see on the screen yes i can see this yes. yeah. okay hari krishna thank you so much the next item is charity charity is meant for the householders the householders should earn a livelihood by an honorable means and spend 50% of their income to propagate krishna consciousness all over the world thus a householder should give in charity to institutional societies that are engaged in that way charity should be given to the right receiver there are different kinds of charity as will be explained later on charity in the mode of goodness passion and ignorance charity in the mode of goodness is recommended by the scriptures but charity in the mode of passion and ignorance is not recommended because it is simply a waste of money charity should be given only to propagate krishna consciousness all over the world that is charity in the mode of goodness Thank you. Can I speak, Mataji? Yes. There were two voices. I think. Yeah. Okay. Whoever, um, I think Rasalila Mataji. Yeah, I have Mataji. I've just read. Okay. So what? There was some other Mataji. Okay. Okay. I will start. Okay. Okay. Uh, thus, as far as the self-control is concerned, it is not only meant for others, orders of religious society. but especially meant for the householder although he is a wife a householder should not use his senses for sex life unnecessarily there are restrictions for the householders even in sex life which should only be engaged in for the propagation of children if he does not require children he should not enjoy sex life with his wife modern society enjoy sex life with contraceptive methods or other abominable methods to avoid the responsibility of children 
This is not in the transcendental quality, but is demoniac. If anyone, even if he's a householder, wants to make progress in spiritual life, he must control his sex life and should not beget a child without the purpose of serving Krishna. If he's able to beget children will be in Krishna consciousness, one can produce hundreds of the children, but without this capacity, one should not indulge only for sex sense pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Can I, can I do the next one, Madhu Kumari, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Sacrifice is another item to be performed by the householder because sacrifices require a large amount of money. Those in other orders of life, namely Brahmacharya, Branapastha, and Shanyasha, have no money. They live by begging. So performance of different types of sacrifice is meant for the householders. They should perform Agni Hotra sacrifices as enjoyed in the Vedi as enjoined in the Vedic literature. But such sacrifices at the present moment very expensive, and it is not possible for householder to perform them. The best sacrifice recommended in this age called Shankirtana Yagna. This Shankirtana Yagna, the chanting of the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare, is the best and most inexpensive sacrifice everyone can adopt in, everyone can adopt it and derive benefit. So these three items, namely charity, sense control, and performance of sacrifice are meant for the householder. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Was there anybody else who wanted to read? Can I read Mataji? Yes, please. Swadhyaya. Yeah. Then Swadhyay Vedic study is meant for Brahmacharya or student life. Brahmacharis should have no connection with women. They should live a life of celibacy and engage the mind in the study of Vedic literature for cultivation of spiritual knowledge. This is called Swadhyay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, can I read, Mataji? Yes, please. Tapas or austerity is especially meant for the retired life. One should not remain a householder throughout his whole life. He must always remember that there are four divisions of life. Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa. So after Grahastha, householder life, one should retire. If one lives for a hundred years, he should spend 25 years in student life, 25 years in householder life, 25 in retired life, and 25 in the renounced order of life. There are, these are the regulations of the Vedic religious discipline. A man retired from household life must practice austerities of the body, mind, and tongue. That is tapasya. The entire Varnashram Dharma Society is meant for tapasya. Without tapasya or austerity, no human being can get liberation. The theory that there is no need of austerity in life, that one can go on speculating and everything will be nice, is recommended neither in the Vedic literature nor in Bhagavad Gita. Such theories are manufactured by show bottle spiritualists who are trying to gather more followers. If there are restrictions, rules and regulations, people will not become attracted. Therefore, those who want, who want followers in the name of religion just to have a show only, don't restrict the lives of their students, nor their own lives. But that method is not approved by the Vedas. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Can I read the question? Yes, please. Sorry, was somebody going to read? Okay, I'm going to. I'm yes, going to read this Sorry. Sorry, Sorry. <laughs> can I read Mataji? Yes. 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 So, so, Mataji, can you go a little bit up? Ah, I read from as far. As far as, yeah. As far as the Brahmanical quality of simplicity is concerned, not only should a particular order of life follow this principle, but every member be in the 
ब्रह्म काट आश्रमा गृहस्थ आश्रमा वन प्रस्त्र आश्रमा और सन्यासी आश्रमा वन शुड बी वेरी सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड थैंक यू Yes, yes. Hare Krishna. Ahimsa, sorry. Ahimsa means not arresting the prog progressive life of of any living entity. One should not think that since the spirit spirit sparks is never killed even after the killing of the body, there is no harm in killing animals for sense grat gratification. People are now. now addicted to eating animals in in spite of having an amply amply su supply of grains fruit and milk there is no necessary for animal killing these injections is for everyone when there is no alternative one may kill one one may kill an animal but it should be offered in 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 sacrifice sacrifice at any rate when there is an implied food supply for humanity person who are desire desiring to make advancement in spiritual re realization should not commit violence to animals real ahimsa means not checking anyone's progressive life the animal are also making progress in their evolutionary life by Trans 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 migrating from one category of animal life to to another. If a particular animal is killed, then his progress is checked. If an if an animal is staying in a particular body for so so many days or so many years and and is ultimately ultimately killed, then he has to come back again in the in that form of life to complete the. remaining days in order to be promoted to another specific of life so their progress should not be checked simple simply to satisfy one palate this is called ahimsa thank you anybody else wants to read hari krishna okay please satyam this word means that one should not distort the truth for some personal interest in vedic literature there are some difficult passages but the meaning or the purpose should be learned from a bona fide spiritual master that is the process for understanding the vedas truthy means that one should hear from the authority one should not construe some interpretation for his personal interest there are so many commentaries on bhagavad gita that misinterpret the original text the real import of the word should be presented and that should be learned from a bona fide spiritual master thank you is there can any can i read the next one can i read mataji sorry one minute that was chandra chaitanya prabhu is that okay yes please prabhu ji a crowd means to check anger even if there is provocation one should be tolerant for once one becomes angry his whole body becomes polluted anger is a product in the mode of passion and lust so one who is transcendentally situated should check himself from anger apashunam means that one should not find fault with others or correct them unnecessary of course to call a thief a thief is not fault finding but to call an honest person a thief is very much offensive for one who is making advancement in spiritual life uh re means one should be very modest and must not perform some act which is abominable acharpalam determination means that one should not be agitated or frustrated in some attempt there may be failure in some attempt but one should not worry one should not be sorry for that he should make progress with patience and determination thank, thank you. you thank you prabhu ji there was somebody who wanted to read can i read mata ji yes please the word tejas used uh, here is meant for the kshatriyas the kshatriyas should always be very strong to be able to give protection to the weak they should not pose themselves and 
as non-violent. If violence is required, they must exhibit uh, it. But a person who is able to curb down his enemy may under certain conditions show forgiveness. He may excuse minor offenses. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mother. Anybody else wants to read? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sotam means cleanliness, not only in mind and body, but in one's dealings also. It is specially meant for the mercantile people who did not deal in the black market. Natim Anita, not expecting honor, applies to the sudras, the worker class, which are considered according to Vedic injunctions to be the lowest of the four classes. They should not be puffed up with unnecessary prestige or honor and should remain in their own status. It is the duty of the sudras to offer respect to the higher class for the upkeep of the social order. Hare Krishna. Thank you. And the last paragraph. Okay, I'm going to read this then. All these 26 qualifications mentioned are transcendental qualities. They should be cultivated according to the different status, statuses of social and occupational order. The purpose is that even though material conditions are miserable, if these qualities are developed by practice by all classes of men, then gradually it is possible to rise to the highest platform of transcendental realization. Thank you very much. I know it is a really long purport. And before we start, let me just say the prayers. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Anamostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Rishubhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpati Rupascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shrivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshatarine Thank you everybody for showing so much patience today with all the issues and I know it's the time is gone it's already 25 past eight but um, hopefully we will manage to um, cover what um, I have planned for today so let me just share the screen okay so yesterday we had covered till um, eight qualities and today we are going to start from the ninth quality, which is oh, Arjavam, simplicity. So um, it's quite, the, some of the qualities that are listed here actually is, is quite straightforward and simple to understand, but I've just listed it so that, you know, we go through them. And so then everybody is on the same page. So yeah. So uh, Prabhupada says that um, this Brahmanical quality of simplicity should every member of the society, whether he is a Brahmachari or a Grihast or a Vanaprast, everybody should be simple and straightforward. There should be no duplicity. There should be no, um, you know, um, ulterior motives. You should just be very simple and straightforward in your dealings. The next quality is Ahimsa. So here we are talking about all the divine qualities. Um, so um, Prabhupada, um, Krishna has listed 26 qualities and we are continuing. So the next one is Ahimsa. Now in the purport, Prabhupada is writing that don't think since the spirit spark is never killed, so there is no harm in killing animals. 
animals also making progress in their evolutionary life and if killed then his progress is checked he has to come back in that form of life to complete the remaining days so i picked up this verse from um, uh, chaitanya charitamrit madhya leela in the purport prabhupada is talking about um, this verse actually tells us about the various species jalajanava lakshani stavara lakshavimsati kramayo rudra sankhaya pakshinam dasha lakshanam trimsal lakshani pasavah chatur lakshani manushah so um Prabhupada is talking about how the evolution is working. We have discussed this many times before when we were discussing how karma does not affect the animals, and animals just have a evolutionary process, and then they reach the higher species. So, as you can see over here, also uh, it starts from the aquatics, and then we move on from the aquatics to birds and whatever else, and then you know eventually we move on. Now this. is a conversation from is a letter and a conversation that prabhupada was having with um, some of his disciples now over here as you can see there was a question that what is the next evolutionary step for these flowers that we offer to krishna and prabhupada is actually explaining the whole process that from trees the worms do you see from the flower there are some butterflies you have seen the flower generates some worms they transform into butterfly you have seen it then gradually they'll become birds from birds different birds then they become beast four legged four legs turns to two hands and then gorilla monkey and then we come to this beautiful form and propad never misses the opportunity to let us know how important this form that we've got is see here again he says if you miss this opportunity again you want to become butterfly go on that is what he's saying you see so this human form of life comes after so many evolutionary processes and if we miss this chance and we will have to start again like prabhupada is saying from the butterfly and we don't want to miss this chance this whole this whole divine qualities this devi sampada is a means to rectify rectify what this diseased condition that we have got of birth old age disease and death so this devi sampada meaning you know trying to get these divine qualities is so that we can then elevate ourselves and get out of this cycle that we are in and uh, this was i thought this was very interesting where uh, the, the the devotees asking doesn't krishna take any special mercy of flowers that are offered to him and prabhupada says yes when it is offered to krishna therefore we offer flowers to krishna we are doing service to the flowers imagine that the flowers also that are being offered to krishna we are actually doing a service to the flowers so that then they are elevated in their next life okay now the reason why i'm showing all this is that we are talking about ahimsa we've seen the evolution we've seen this cycle and propad clearly in his um sorry i need to go back in his um purport he's talking about there is a natural progression of life and as soon as we for our own selfish purposes try to end a life an animal life or, or whatever life what we are doing is that animal was meant to be in that particular body for x number of years we have taken away those years from that animal so now he will have to come back again in that form and that is why ahimsa understanding ahimsa is so so important that we cannot uh, check the progress of any living entity that's not right and that is why one should always remember that we uh, because animals like we have discussed so many times all living entities are souls they are all eternal souls and they are all progressing so that they can advance in their life so when we take away their life that means we are cutting short what they were going to progress into so that's why one should be very very careful about this some of the other um um qualities that are listed are quite straightforward like satyam so obviously you know uh, try to be truthful 
And here Prabhupada also talks about how, um, especially when you have uh, Vedic literatures or Shastric injunctions, um, because some of the injunctions are very, very uh, difficult, so people, in order to uh, fulfill their own uh, interest in their own personal interest, they tend to change things. And Prabhupada very clearly in his purport is saying that, um, he says that one should not distort the truth for some personal interest. You know, um, he used to always talk about in his lectures that people uh, would, because in order to gain more uh, popularity and gain more disciples, you know, they would hand out mantras for um, some some amount of money that you know you chant this mantra you don't have to change your lifestyle at all you continue with whatever you are doing you can continue to eat meat you can continue to you know um, have intoxicants and all just chant this mantra so this is distorting the truth for personal interest so one should not do that the next one is akrodha now akrodha of course is being tolerant in this material life, there are going to be tribulations, there are going to be problems, there are going to be various kinds of provocations. But one has to rise above that, bearing in mind that what is the higher purpose? If I'm just going to be caught in all this, then I'm going to forget the real purpose of this human life. And you know, when you, when one is angry and Akrodha and Prabhupada writes in his purpose that his whole body becomes polluted. How does the whole body become polluted? When you get angry, I'm sure if any of you have got angry or probably you don't, I do get angry. When you get angry, you know, um, your body kind of starts shivering, you're clenching your fist, your, your face goes red. That is all polluting the body. And that's what Prabhupada is writing about. That's why we need to be tolerant of situations. Things may go wrong, but we have to understand that there is a higher purpose and tolerate these small, small situations that are going to come. It's fine. It doesn't matter. You should be like the, the ocean where all these so many rivers go into the ocean, but the ocean doesn't flood because of all these waters coming to them. It just absorbs them, takes them in. Um, the next point is about Tyaga renunciation. Now, um, again, there are two different types of um, renunciation. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you must have heard the words Falgu Vairagya and Yukta Vairagya. Now, Prabhupada always spoke about this and he said, you know, that uh, a lot of spiritualists um, think that they must renounce the material world, go and uh, live in a forest or on a mountain and not touch any material things because you know then they will get entangled but that is not the actual vairagya because unless uh, because most often it is seen that with such people after some years uh, because they have um, no other uh, place to uh, absorb their mind in they normally do come back and get entangled in the material life anyways so Prabhupada talks about yukta vairagya, which is the real renunciation and which means that you don't have to um, stop using material things, but instead try and see how you can use everything in Krishna's service. Like for example, today all of us are sitting on our laptops and phones and whatever else and tablets. They're all material things. You know, a, a, a person looks at it and thinks, oh, you know, why would a... Uh, uh, renunciate you need these things but you you're using it for in krishna service it, to listen to krishna katha or you know other things so that the tyaga that Prabhupada talks about is that kind of tyaga shantir is quite straightforward peacefulness one must try and just be um be calm peaceful in all situations uh, that's a quality of a person who has this uh, divine and transcendental nature um, okay, I push uh, Apaishanam. This is an interesting quality where it says aversion to fault finding. And you will notice that a lot of the times, a lot of emphasis is given on this particular quality that you must not try and um, criticize and gossip about, you know, people who 
or you think that somebody has got this fault, don't talk about it. You have no right to talk about somebody else's fault unless you are doing it in order to help somebody or it is essential to protect somebody. You have no right to do that, right? Sometimes, you know, um, as, us like spiritual practitioners also, we tend to find falls in, um, let's say, people who are not on this path. And, you know, we, we talk about saying that, oh, you know, they're so um, entangled in their material life. And we don't have the right to do that. Our, our only goal should be, how can I help everybody? Because um, once upon a time, not in the very long past, um, you and me were also in the same position. And somebody had the compassion and love for us and took us out of that situation. So that, that should be our only goal. And um, I'm not sure if anybody has guessed what this picture is about, uh, but I'm just going to tell you the story. This is a very, very interesting story about not finding faults. So um, once in um, South of India, I'll not go into the details in very briefly this story. In South of India, there was a very, um, very famous wrestler very handsome, very good uh, at wrestling. And, you know, um, he would win all the, all the fights that they had and well-known. Um, but he never uh, misused his power. He was, he was a nice man, a good man. And there was a lady in that village who was extremely beautiful. She was probably the most beautiful lady in the entire area. And when this wrestler saw her, he uh, fell in love with her and they got married eventually, but he was so um, obsessed with the, her beauty and especially her eyes. So there are two versions of the story. And one version says that when there was a religious procession being carried out in the village, everybody was looking at the deity that was being taken. And this wrestler, because he was so engrossed in his wife's beauty, he was standing next to her holding the umbrella, but not even looking at the deities of the procession, just constantly looking at her eyes. And here in this picture, another version is that he was walking backwards so that not for a moment would he be able to take his eyes off her face because he just wanted to constantly look at her eyes. And at that time, uh, a very uh, well-known Acharya, Ramanuj Acharya, saw this. He saw what was going on. And like everybody else was laughing at this wrestler, thinking, you know, look at what he's, how he's behaving. But uh, Ramanuj Acharya did not laugh at him. Instead, what he said is, he asked him to come and meet him later. And the wrestler went to him and Ramanu Chacharya asked him, why were you behaving in this particular manner? And he, in all honesty, he said, have you ever seen anybody's eyes that are as beautiful as my wife's? So I, you know, I was just looking at her eyes. So see here, why I'm telling this story is, instead of seeing the fault, what Ramanu Chacharya saw was the immense love that the wrestler had. And he said, he in his mind is thinking, if I could just redirect this love. So he said to the wrestler, what if I show you somebody whose eyes are even more beautiful? And the wrestler said, well, you know, I'll obviously fall in love with those eyes. So um, Ramanu Jacharya took him to uh, the temple of um, Ranganath. And I don't know if anybody has gone to the Ranganath temple. I haven't but I have heard that the deity there is absolutely beautiful. So anyways, when he went to the temple, he saw the deity and he saw the eyes. And obviously then, you know, this is the Acharya who is showing his compassion. He fell in love with, with the eyes and both he and his wife became devotees of Ranganath. So what, I'm, what we're saying here is rather than seeing the fault, Look at what good is there in anybody. Like an example of Srila Prabhupada, when he went to the US, all the people that he was surrounded by were hippies. They did not follow any regulative principles. Um, they weren't leading a life of shorcham and you know cleanliness and all those kinds of things. But Prabhupada saw the spark in all of them. 
and with so much in lo of love and compassion he used to cook for them you know give them food and even wash up after them and just that compassion and just that nature of propad where instead of seeing the faults he saw the good how many people then became disciples of propad and they still are after 50 years so uh, for us also what we should try and do is always try and look for the good in everybody and um refrain from fault finding and refrain from talking about faults all right next okay uh, most of these are quite straightforward i've just listed them so that we should remember them um daya mercy towards but daya again see it is mercy towards all living entities not just you know us uh, oh sometimes we tend to do this that you know yes it's mercy mercy towards human beings but daya is mercy towards all living entities seeing the soul and the super soul in every living entity and the next one is freedom from greed i think we will um, these are all quite straightforward uh, then we talk about achapalam chapalam everybody remember this word i think from the sixth chapter of the bhagavad gita when krishna is talking to arjuna about how uh, for yoga you have to control the mind and krish and arjuna said the mind is chapala it is so fickle it constantly moves from here to there right so this is where a chapalam is determination there may be some um uh, fall back uh, there may be some fall downs you may uh fail in some of your attempts but that does not mean that you give up that does not mean that you you think that you know uh what's the point you have to persevere you have to carry on with patience and determination if you want to move ahead so that's what this is the next one is teja and as we read in the purport this is mainly for the kshatriyas you need to have that strength and that vigors to be to be able to um, protect the weak you know this um, it's mainly for the kshatriyas and we've seen that in in arjuna when he was asked to fight the battle but um also if there is wrong going on in the society then then there have been cases where the brahmanas also uh, take up the shastras and fight although it is mainly for the kshatriyas and then shama is forgiveness that i think we are all clear vritti fortitude shocham shocham again is not just cleanliness of the mind and body abhopad is very clearly saying this that it is also one's dealings that you know uh, the vaishyas mercantile class one should not deal in black market abhopad clearly writes in the in the purport that one should not deal in black market so you should have very clean dealings in whatever you are doing and why it is about vaishyas because vaishyas are the business class who conduct um these businesses so um that's why the exam that's why it's mainly for that class right the next one is adroho now this is a very very important um quality and i'm just going to move my so um adroho is that we should not be um envious now it's easy to say that we should not be envious but we are conditioned and sometimes we do feel like that at that time what is important to understand is that krishna is giving each one of us what we need remember what we need not what we want because what we want may not be the right thing for us to make progress and krishna as the father the loving father all that he wants is for us to make progress so if we see that somebody is getting something which i may think that i want immediately one should realize that but krishna is not giving me this because that may actually hamper my progress so i'm getting what i need i don't need i don't want this you know that should be the thought always and that is why you must never be envious remembering and realizing that 
Krishna is giving everybody what they need in order to make progress. And the last one I think was quite clear. Uh, Nati Manita is that one must not expect honor. One must not demand any honor. Obviously, Prabhupada is saying this is mainly for the Shudras, but like we discussed earlier also, all of these qualities are meant for all classes, but some class manifest it more. So one must note, um, anyways, honor cannot be demanded. Respect cannot be demanded. It can be commanded. So you don't demand for anything. And when Prabhupada says that it is mainly for Shudras, it is because that class, according to the Vedic injunctions, is there in order to, um, you know, uh, give respect to the higher class and that way maintain the social order of um, the society. So anyways, I will just stop sharing the screen for a minute. So yes, there were these, these were these 26 um, divine qualities. All of us, like Prabhupada, in the end of this purport, he says that, yes, although the uh, material what does he say that should be cultivated? Yeah. Even though material conditions are miserable, if, if these qualities are developed by practice by all classes of men, then gradually it is possible to rise to the highest platform of transcendental realization. So um, I'm sure um, you already have many of these qualities, but now after hearing and reading all these things, I guess we should strive to develop these qualities, maintain them so that we can rectify this diseased condition of life. Um, that's all that I have to share. If anybody has any comments or questions, then please feel free. Hare Krishna Madhu Kumari Mataji, my humble obeisances. Thank you. Thank you very much for the class. Uh, my question is about tolerance. Um, tolerance, uh, like how much one should be tolerant, like tol tolerance to injustice, tolerance to abuse is not correct, isn't it? So No, that was no, my and, no and even in ISKCON and very clearly our, our gurus, our seniors, our acharyas do talk about this, that when we say tolerance, it does not mean that you should tolerate injustices or abuse or all of that. No, it doesn't mean that. Yes. We do understand that, you know, um, when we are in Krishna consciousness, we understand about our past karma and all of those things. But that still does not mean that you tolerate uh, injustices and abuses. No, you do stand up and you uh, take a stand and don't accept it and don't tolerate it. That's been that's actually uh, something that's being made very clear by um, a lot of our senior devotees when they talk about this. This stand is being very, very, very clear that uh, just thinking that uh, this is my past karma does not mean that I will tolerate anything. It does not mean that because if it is, if something is wrong, it is wrong. So you don't. Yeah. Have to do it. Thank you very much, Hare yeah. Krishna. No problem. Anybody else? Okay. That's good. We don't have any questions today. So thank you for actually tolerating me today. Um, you know, it's it was it was just talking about these 26 divine qualities, but I hope that uh, using some stories and examples, we will remember it and so that we can start um, trying to apply it in our lives and learn them in our lives. Hare Krishna Kumari. I just wanted to mention yeah. because I see you in so much mode of goodness. I don't think you get angry. Ah, Palika Mataji. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to control it. <laughs> <laughs> now the way you speak, you see so much mode of goodness, you know. And I don't oh, think you ever get angry. <laughs> oh, that's that's all an act, Palika Mataji. I'm a very good actor, you know. I'm oh, very can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. actually admitted that he gets, you know, anybody would can get angry, but it's how you deal with it, isn't it? Correct. That's Correct. true. So, so yeah. angry is always lurking around the corner. It's up always. to you. Always. Or if you wanted to it's invited you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's always, it's always there. So, you know, yes. when one is conscious of the fact, then one actually at least tries to think, what, how am I going to behave now that I'm getting angry? <laughs> 
you know yes. <laughs> that's the only you thing you have to do. stop and think yeah absolutely that is the best thing i mean you said about um somebody said about um the, the previous question um really when you think about it we all we all um come across people being not nice to us mm. and really really is challenging um your rights in a lot of ways and yeah, so yeah. it's not it's not what you do about it is how you do it Correct. that's most important so what what krishna consciousness is teaching us not to have a big brawl about it and show yourself up and show the the um the, the organization up or or show the other people up you're not you're just hurting yourself yeah and yeah. then you think you're again you're getting revenge and all that but you're not yeah. so yeah it's it's how you do it you, you can walk away but uh, go and see the person later and yeah. say yeah. nice talk to them nicely yeah. Yeah. and you build a good relationship often yeah. you'll be yeah. surprised yeah yeah it's very important it's very important <laughs> to kind of walk away from some some situations where you think that you know it it will do you good, good if you come back to it and mm. from some some situations if you see that you cannot change anything just permanently remove yourself from situations yes it just yeah. doesn't like robert would say that you know don't get don't get into these kinds of arguments or fight if you if it's not going to serve any good walk away it's better to just walk away yeah, yeah. well we conditioned in, in in the material world for yeah. many many years this hard but yeah. honestly yeah. you find that yourself to be true to yourself it doesn't work yes, yes. and you 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 really you know they create a lot of bad relationships as well yes. Yes. so yeah thank you thank you for that any yeah, other thank comments? you i just had to squeeze a few moments in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you yeah, thank you okay um all right yes yes you know like always to my so the fire if you add fi fire into fire it becomes bigger so that's why like my mother said yes you have to, at that moment you have to leave that place and otherwise delete very you know like in in cool situation yes. but when it comes to anything against krishna consciousness or if something is wrong somebody is saying something about krishna consciousness which is not true then you have to stand up for it otherwise for your personal you know like situations and things you have to learn to be tolerant and you know like mataji said delete afterwards when it's cooled down right. not in when the fire yeah. is you know in the yeah yeah you don't fuel the fire that's right yeah. um right. it was there was um prayojan and prabhu said He went to the, one of the big towns to do book distribution, and mm -hmm. somebody came out of the pub and he offered the book, and the guy more or less spat in his face, mm -hmm. and said, "You people are this and that," and so he said, "Yes, we are, or beggars or something. We are." <laughs> and you know, the guy just stood back. He became sober instantly, yeah. and he eventually he took several books from him, and this is a, a sort of half drunk person, so. is how you you react really correct correct and he was so cool and calm you know how gentle he is he just <laughs> yes <that's, laughs> uh, he's 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 something else he's yes. an inspiration to all of us yeah he is he's a he's a good um a role model i mean the the thing, the job he does oh my goodness it's amazing and he just carries on with his whole heart and he does it that's the kind of things we should learn for some people correct it really sticks out doesn't it yeah all right it is uh, 5 to 9 if there are no questions or any comments then maybe we can all end the meeting yes we do so much matter just for the fun very good that i just want to keep you awake <laughs> I don't mind but I'm sure the others need to go. <laughs> We want to go yeah. Absolutely. We got faith. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much class. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.